So let's kind of compare it to the other two reports. So if I go back on over here, I, I have the transaction list by date uh, report, transaction list by date, right click and open. And I'm gonna set the range up top on this one, close on the hand boogie, set the range from 120122, 123122 and run it. So there we have that. And it's a nice shorter streamlined uh, report. And so we start off with this cash transaction on 12.1 for 52. And there's the cash transaction here for 52. Let's look at the other one that's similar, which is gonna be the transaction list with splits. Right click on that, duplicate, and go to that report. And then close the hand boogie, scroll up. I'm gonna go from 010122 to 123122 and run it. And so now we have this one. Now this one's nice, but it still gives it by, by the account first. The thing that's nice about it is it gives us the splits over here. So it doesn't just tell us, you know, the other side of the transaction, but gives us the, the, the multiple accounts that are impacted. So if we had an account that has multiple things happening to it, then you see the activity here. But so it gives you the full transaction, but it's, but it's broken out by uh, account. So if we compare these, then this, this one we looked at last time is streamlined. It gives it by date, which is kind of neat. I, I wish they'd give us this one by date that also has the splits, but they've got this one by date and we can sort it by transaction type, but we get uh, where it gets a little bit tricky is that when you have these transactions that have a split in it, such as this one, or let's take a look at this one. So, because then you can see one side of the transaction, but then there's more than two uh, accounts on the other side. So you get, you lose a little bit of data, but at the same time, it's a little bit more streamlined of a report, giving you all the transaction types in a nice tight kind of place. If you go to the journal report, then it's gonna give you the detail in the format of debits and credits. So that's nice because you can still see it by date over here. And then you get the detail by date of all of the accounts that are impacted. And you can kind of count the, the number of accounts uh, in that fashion. You can do so by exporting to Excel if you wanted to and use some kind of count if function in order to count the number of transactions. If you wanted to use that as kind of like a billing range that you can use because that'll take into consideration these larger transactions that have more than two accounts affected. Also a great tool if you're trying to understand the journal entries because this will give you not only the accounts that are affected, it'll give you the accounts affected when more than two accounts are impacted and it's gonna give you the debits and credits. So you can start to look at these transactions and say, okay, what's an invoice actually doing in terms of increases, decreases, and debits and credits? Look at the transaction over here, and then you can go verify that transaction, what it's doing on the financial statements by going to the actual financial statements. For example, this one accounts receivable went up by 108 on 12.6. I can go into the accounts receivable and drill down on it. And on uh, 12, six, it should be going up somewhere by 108. I believe that's the one. So we can, we can kind of use this to, to get a better understanding of how each of the forms uh, are entering a journal entry to create the financial statements. And then we can get, we can kind of double check our debit and credit kind of format. Also understanding what these actual invoices are doing with a transaction. You can see it can get quite complex. The payroll transactions also uh, can be quite complex. So it's useful to go into these kind of transactions and, and understand them. It's also possibly relevant from a billing perspective because you might, you might wanna say, hey, I'm gonna charge more if I'm entering transactions that have a lot of accounts that are impacted, for example, and you can take into consideration that fact. So like this invoice is obviously a lot more complex than entering an invoice that you just you just had to add like one service item or something like that so those are those general uh detail reports 